Dreallday.com. What's going on, everybody? Dre Ball and Dreallday.com. So we are here for a next, the next installment, the next part of this diet and nutrition talk that I've been doing. For those of you who don't know, uh, back in about around March or April 2013, I put up some new videos. Actually, go back in the story. Back in 2009, 2010, I put out a video because people have been asking me about my diet and nutrition because they see that I'm in pretty good shape. You know, they say, how do you stay in such good shape? How do you eat? And back then, I used to eat whatever the fuck I wanted. I didn't care. I didn't read labels. I just ate whatever I felt like eating whenever. If it happened to be healthy, so what? If it happened to be not healthy, so what? I mean, candy, fried food, ice cream, pizza, cake, whatever. I was eating anything. But then in 2013, I had put out a video, you know, I was working out, I think I didn't have a shirt on, and somebody said, you know, do you give credit to your diet for being in such great physical shape? And then a bunch of people commented, like, yo, he said in the video a while back that he eats whatever he wants. And then I said, all right, you know, you're right, I did say that, but I actually changed my diet, so I need to make a video. So I made those videos, I think I made either four or five part video section. In the diet and nutrition playlist, which is on my channel for all you who want to check it out and watch it. Also, there's a link down here to the diet and nutrition page I put on my website, dreallday.com, which has a ton of links of researched information about different diets, what works, quote unquote, works for certain people, what doesn't. Facts. It's not about opinions, it's about the facts. So, a bunch of links about certain facts about diets. And as I said back then, and I'm going to say now, as time goes on and we evolve, we are always learning more about the human body. We're learning more about food. We're learning more about what's good for us, what's not. Certain type of diseases, you know, diseases and bacteria and all that stuff, they're living things. So they change just like we change. So no information is 100% concrete and will never, quote unquote, never change. Because we'll learn more as time goes on, just like with science, we learn more, you know, 200 years ago, it wasn't no TVs. We got TVs now. So as we learn new things, there's new information and people make changes. So I've learned new things over these past months. I've made changes and this video or this series of videos, however many I put out from here on, is about the changes that I made personally and why I made them. So hopefully some of the information I share here and on my website and the links that I give you to people who are actual experts at this stuff, which I definitely am not. Hopefully some of that information can help inform you and maybe you can make some better informed decisions about yourself and what works for you. Because what works for me may not necessarily be what works best for you. My diet might not be the best diet for you. I got to do what's going to help me get to where I want to go and you might have a whole different situation. But you can apply the information, the facts, same way I apply the facts and find a way that makes it you know, fit your situation basically is what I'm saying. Same thing we do with basketball. So anyway, this video here this is that's just the introduction you see how long it's been already this may be more than one part what i'm doing here depending on how long i talk because i ain't trying to make it a, a two-hour video because ain't nobody gonna stay and watch the whole thing so i might split this up into sections so if any part of this you see me just stop talking it's because i just split the video up into sections i'm recording this whole thing as one long video but depending on how long it is i gotta gauge how much attention span you motherfuckers got and then i'll break it up into how long i need to break it up into all right, now, let's get into what it is we're talking about now. And I got a bunch of notes right here. I just got iOS 7 on the iPhone, iPhone 4S. I didn't get the 5 yet. Somebody want to buy it for me, let me know before I buy it, save the money. But anyway, so, first thing, back then in March, I had actually changed my diet to become vegetarian. Not vegan, but vegetarian. And for those briefly who don't know the difference, Vegan is a person who doesn't eat anything that comes from an animal. That means no dairy products like milk and eggs which come from animals. And they don't eat the actual animal like meat. A vegetarian is a person who just doesn't eat the meat. So they don't eat the actual animal. Like they won't eat uh, chicken or steak, any kind of beef, a cow, pit, pork, pig, stuff like that. But they will eat the byproducts of animals, i.e. dairy. So a vegetarian will eat they will consume milk and eggs and you know whey protein while a vegan won't have nothing that came anywhere from an animal people got their different reasons for it me personally the reason that I decided to go vegetarian is because I started to not like how my body was feeling when I was eating meat now this could have been for several reasons number one it could have been I was eating the wrong types of meat could have been 
you know, cheap ass meat you get from the supermarket or the shit you get when you go to a restaurant. I don't eat fast food, but still a lot of the meat out there is not really good meat. And I talk at length about this, how certain meats get made. If any of you have seen any documentaries about food production in America, you see that the way that these animals are raised is not even humane. So a lot of this meat is not really good meat. And with everything they put in those animals, we put right into ourselves when we eat them. So that may have played a role, maybe not, I don't know. So for about six months, I was vegetarian. I didn't eat any meat. And over that time, I didn't really feel any differences. There were not any changes in my body. I don't think my performance went up or down. Pretty much felt the same. The foods that I started to consume a lot of during that time was a whole lot of grain, rice, beans, uh, lentils, quinoa, oatmeal. To the point that I got sick of fucking eating grains. For about a month and a half, I didn't eat no rice, no beans, no lentils. I had like containers of the shit in my refrigerator. The stuff went bad because I stopped eating it. I just couldn't eat it anymore. And I started eating more like uh, pasta. I think I ate a whole bunch of pasta for the last like two months. Then a friend of mine, another thing I got to keep bringing up. I don't know why this happened or how. But from the time that I put out that series of videos in March to now, almost every new uh, friend that I meet, mostly female friends that I meet, they all are into some type of one of these quote unquote new age type of diets, whether that be clean eating, where you don't eat a lot of processed stuff, or uh, vegetarian or vegan or pescatarian, they all into some type of diet thing. No, nobody's just on a free, free form, eat whatever I want. There are people out there like that, but everybody I keep meeting is somehow under one of these diets. So I think that means something that has something to, that was some type of sign coming in my direction because I was thinking about it. And then when I kept meeting all these people, as I talked about back then, and now, even now I've met more people. So I met someone who was on a paleo diet. And a paleo diet, for those who don't know, that's a diet that I'm adopting now. The paleo diet is you don't eat anything that the cavemen back in the paleolithic era, which is like back when we was cavemen hunting and gathering for food, nothing that they didn't eat, which means basically here's what you do eat. Meat, any kind of meat, fruits, most fruits, almost any fruit, and vegetables. Meat, fruits, vegetables, that's it. Dairy products, you don't eat. No milk, you do eat eggs. Eggs you can't eat because they could get eggs from the animals, but we didn't drink, they didn't drink milk from animals. They, I think they only had milk just for raising the baby. So when you're an adult, you know, no milk, no cheese, no other kind of dairy products except eggs. So that's the paleo diet, it's very simple. You know, no processed foods, no packaged shit, is meat, fruits, vegetables, that's it. So anyway, the paleo diet is a diet that I'm on right now. So I'm going to be referring to these notes as I talk here. So if you see me looking down. So I said I did the vegetarian diet. It wasn't no real physical changes. I felt the same and I started to get sick of eating those grains. And another thing about the paleo diet is there's no grain consumption. You don't eat rice. You don't eat corn. Corn is a grain. You don't eat uh, no legumes, which is beans, peanuts. Peanut is a legume. You know, because you know how people always say peanuts neither pea nor a nut. So peanuts, you do eat nuts when you're in a paleo diet, but not peanuts, because peanuts are not actually nuts. So like macadamia nuts, uh, sunflower seeds, what's the other kind of, any other kind of nuts you can think of. I can't even think of the names of them, but nuts, but not peanuts. And then, you know, peanuts is all over the place. They in almost everything. So no peanuts, no peanut butter. Two things that I love, peanuts and peanut butter, so we can't eat those in the paleo diet. The thing I was talking about with the vegetarian when I was eating all those grains, I actually started to, I gained a little bit of weight, probably not a lot of weight, I'm talking like no more than five pounds. That could have been, a bunch of things could have contributed to that besides the diet, but one thing I started doing was eating smaller meals. You know how people talk about the diet where you, not the diet, but the lifestyle. This is not a diet that I'm talking about. I'm not on any diet. This is a lifestyle. This is the way you live. A diet is temporary. A lifestyle is the way that you live. This is the way that I'm living. It's not something I'm doing for six months or 30 days or none of that shit. This is just, I'm changing everything. So, some people talk about when you eat, eat small meals. Eat five or six small meals per day so you don't get so hungry. You don't binge eat at your breakfast, lunch, dinner. And that debate has gone back and forth between different people. If you go online and Google that, you'll see 100 articles for it and 100 articles against it. 
Me personally, I think what ended up happening with me is I start eating more. When I was eating the small meals over the course of the day, I actually consumed more food than when I would eat, you know, more bigger square meals, the three square meals with the snacks and all that stuff. So I think that contributed that I was eating a little bit more than usual. So I don't do the small meal stuff no more now with the paleo diet. My only snacks anyway is fruits and vegetables, but I don't even know anybody who snacks on vegetables. I snack on fruit. <laughs> and meat, you know, if I had some suitable meat. So one thing that I was thinking of doing before I got into the paleo diet, before I decided on the paleo diet, was to go gluten free. Now me, I'm not a celiac. Celiac is people who are allergic to gluten and they have actual physical reactions, allergic reactions when they consume gluten. And Anybody who's not familiar with gluten, of course, is another thing you can look up for yourself. I have links on this on my website on the page that I referenced earlier. Gluten is, let me not try to explain it because I don't know the uh, definite definition, but gluten is in bread, gluten is in um, any type of flour, it can be, is in a similar form in any types of grains. So any grains, breads, flour has gluten in it. So anybody who is gluten free, if you know anyone who's gluten free, you can ask them. They don't eat any type of bread, they stay away from grains for the most part, I believe. Not 100% sure on that. Some people eat grains anyway, and some people don't. And no wheat. Anything with wheat in it is has a whole lot of gluten. So I was thinking of going gluten-free. Even though I'm not a celiac, I don't have any allergic reactions to eating bread. As I read up on the topic, a lot of links, again, go to my website. All that stuff I read myself. That's why I put it on my site. People talk about even if you don't have an allergic reaction to gluten, it could still be hurting you. And if you were to try to go gluten free for maybe 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, you would feel the difference and you would understand that even if you're not allergic to it, it's still not helping you. Same thing with like ice cream. Like I'm not allergic, ain't none of us allergic to ice cream. But if you're an athlete and you eat ice cream every single day, is probably hurting your performance and if you stop eating it you'll probably perform at a higher level even if you kept everything else the same so it's the same thing with gluten that's the argument that was made now me I haven't been gluten free long enough to tell you if it's helped me or not but I've decided with enough information I've decided that I'm gonna go gluten free I'm not gonna mess with no bread nothing with wheat in it no types of flours and I'm not gonna mess with any grains so that's the situation that I was thinking about just go gluten free and as I read up on it, I'm trying to think, should I go paleo or gluten-free? And then I kind of found that when you go paleo, that pretty much is gluten-free because the gluten is not in meats, it's not in fruits, and it's not in vegetables. So if you're on a paleo diet, you are gluten-free at the same time. It's part of it. Now, gluten-free alone is just gluten-free. You can still eat all that other stuff. You can still eat, you know, a Snickers bar as long as it ain't no gluten in it, like a gluten-free you know, candy bar or something. But if you paleo, you're not eating none of that because it's no processed foods. And I got a whole bunch of notes here. I'm going to go through these as we talk. Now, I told you about everyone I'm meeting was on some type of diet. Paleo, like cavemen, meats, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and oils. Oils is another thing I didn't mention. Oils like uh, extra virgin olive oil, which I use, I've been using before. That's a good oil because the oils have certain fats in them. And for those who don't know, I'm going to say that a lot of times in this video. There are fats that are actually good for you. Not all fats are bad for you. There are good fats. You have to you know, look up the stuff and find out how it works. There are two types of fats. There's LDLs and HDLs, which is low density and high density lipoproteins. But you have to read up on this stuff. I'm not going to sit and try to give you definitions. I know I'm going to mess it up because I ain't no damn scientist nor am I a nutritionist, but I have some of this information. So there are good fats out there that you can consume, but you gotta look them up and know what it is you're eating when you put something in your body. One thing that I've changed a lot over the last you know, six, seven months is that I'm very aware of what I'm putting in my body when I eat now. If you ever, I mean, if any of you was ever in a grocery store with me or any type of store where I'm buying something, I'm looking at the label before I buy anything. I'm reading what the ingredients are, and a good rule of thumb I got from a female friend of mine several months ago was look at the label if it has more than five ingredients in it don't buy it in this process too much stuff in it you don't know what it is like if you read the label on some food and it got something in it that you have no idea what it is you can't even pronounce the shit why would you put that in your body you don't even know what it is that's this is what she's saying to me and it's the same thing that I think to myself now 
And it's crazy that I went 30 years never considering that. And a lot of us did because th this information wasn't out there and it wasn't so freely available. The world we live in now is just an information world. Anything you want to know about is out there pretty much for free. You just got to put the time and effort in to find it, which is easy, and to consume it, which is not so easy. Which is why people want to hear you tell them exactly what to do instead of reading the shit when you're telling them where it's at. But anyway, that's another story. So, more than five ingredients is very processed, not something that you want to eat. Now, when I look at stuff, I remember I was looking at a, a Gatorade bottle I had in my car. And I'm looking at the ingredients in the Gatorade. More than half of those ingredients, I had no idea what they were. I couldn't pronounce them. I was like, what is this shit? I'm putting all this stuff in my body. I love Gatorade, but I have no idea what it is. So, uh, a bunch of people have left me comments when I had started talking about I'm going to drink Gatorade again. Because first I said I wasn't going to drink it. And then someone gave me some information and said it was good for you. And I said, I am going to drink it. And then some people was like, yo, you should drink this. You should try this. A bunch of suggestions poured in through the comments in these videos. And I read all y'all comments. And I decided that what I'm going to do Gatorade-wise is, I've looked up, there's simple recipes for making your own Gatorade, quote-unquote Gatorade. Because you need to replace the electrolytes, which water alone does not have. That's why you got all these specialty waters that's supposed to have all this extra stuff in it. Not all this extra stuff, but stuff in it besides just being water to help you when you're an athlete. Because when you're an athlete, there are things that you lose when you're working out that you need to put back in your body that water itself doesn't do. Gatorade does, but it has a lot of extra stuff in it. So you got, I'm trying to find a medium. And basically it's like you know, lemon juice, lime juice, of course salt. And there's some other things to help the flavoring if you want it. I don't have the exact ingredients, but I'm going to start making my own type of drinks that I can have when I'm working out because I need something. But I think I'm going to put the Gatorade to rest again. So that's the This is TZ from New York. Nike, swoosh all day. Work on your game.